podcast about the date here in the Whitecast studio. Nicholas Strong is a podcast to deliver encouraging scriptures and stories to help you hold on and stand strong. And today we're going to help those of you that are on a publishing journey. It's episode 121, and I'm going to share three keys to getting published. You've heard me say it often, every number has a name, every name has a story, every story matters to God. That means your story matters. So perhaps you have a story that you want to share with the world. Perhaps you have a goal of getting published. Maybe it's your dream to, to, to publish a book. So I'm just going to share some things that I've learned. In our last episode, 120, we shared a backstage to publishing. I shared a lot of insight that I gleaned from my literary agent, Esther Federkevich, from a rewrite conference back in 2013 and 2015. So today, I want to kind of pick up where I wrapped up last week. I mentioned these three keys briefly, but we're going to unpack them throughout today's episode in detail. All right, so the very um, first key is this, three keys to getting published. I'm just going to give you all three right now, and then we'll unpack them. Here we go. Um, number one, if you want to get published, you got to have a great idea, right? Great concept. What's, what's your concept? Concept, all right? got to have a great idea. Number two, you have to be a great writer, all right? That's something that you can work. That's something that you can develop, and the only way that you can do that is by reading and writing, all right? We'll unpack that in a second. And the third key to getting published is you need a great platform. Some of you don't know what a platform is. Some of you, that makes you uncomfortable because you don't want to promote yourself. So um, that's been a struggle that I've had, and I'm going to um, share my, my feelings, thoughts, and how to navigate those waters here a little bit later on in the podcast, but um, let's get going. Three keys to getting published. The first one is you need to have a great concept, all right? What story do you want to tell? If you want to get published, you should be passionate about an idea. You should be passionate about a story. You should be passionate about information you have that you want to share, whether that's going to help people, whether it's going to entertain people, you need to know what your concept is. If your goal is just to be published and you have 30 ideas and you don't really know which one you want to do, you just want to be published, all right, you're going about the whole thing wrong. The end of the goal, uh, I mean, obviously, when you, we, everyone that writes, every aspiring writer writes to be read. But if your goal is simply, I just want to be published, we're probably not going to get published. You need to, to find out what God wants you to write. You need to ask yourself, what am I most passionate about? Out of all the book concepts that I have, what one does the world need? I'm talking about a must-have right now. I've got to get this off my chest. I've got to share this with the world because this is a resource to help people, all right? So you need, if you don't know what your concept is, you need, I mean, that's the first thing. You got to identify what book you're going to write. What story do you have to tell? What story is going to help the reader? What does God want you to write? What is the one concept that you can't get away from. You know, for me, 41 Will Come had been burned in me for years. It was a 15-year journey from dream to publish to getting published. 15 years. There was no question, though, which book I was going to publish. I knew it was 41 Will Come. That was what was in my heart. That's what I was burning with. That's what I bounced off other people. And if maybe you have two ideas and you just, man, you don't know which one, get some feedback. Share both ideas on your social media with those that are closest, that you're closest with, and, and, and then, you know, get some feedback and maybe that, that will help you kind of pinpoint it. Maybe all of a sudden, yeah, you know, this one got more votes than this one and this is the one that resonates with me. So yeah, I'm going to, man, I'm going to go with book, book A, all right? But you got to find out what it is. You got to identify it. If you want to get published, you got to know what you're going to write, right? Right, all right, no pun, in, no pun intended. Um, let, me, uh, let me share how I came up with my, um, my second concept, um, the book that I am writing now, 
And um, so I'm still pursuing my dream to publish a, a, a second book. And I, this, this was harder. 41 will come. It was already in my heart. It was a part of me. It had been with me for years. There was no doubt that was the concept that I was sharing. I did ask for feedback, and it was usually good. Um, I shared last week my, my agent, Edder, uh, Esther Federkevich, even before she was my agent, I approached her at a writer's conference and I asked her for 60 seconds to share my concept. And I had already rehearsed my elevator pitch. I knew what the book was about. It was inside of me. And when she said go, I, w- I was ready. I valued her input. If she would have said, you know what, Chuck, this is, you know, this is, this concept is already out there. There's already too many books about this. You know what? I probably would have, I don't know, I may have gone and picked something out, but the feedback I got was, this is great. This is good. You, you know, this is unique. You need, you need to do it. And that's what fueled me to go forward. So if you're stuck, ask somebody, ask somebody for some help, share your concepts with your, with your social media friends and hopefully that will help you hone in on your concept all right now that concept should be be unique all right I'm not saying that there can't be another book about the subject you're going to write about but you need to be able to give a unique perspective in fact before you get published you will have to write a book proposal which we talked about a little bit in depth last week on the on our episode in your book proposal, you will, that, that's going to, boy, that's going to really help, help you navigate on, on the direction of the book, okay? So um, it's important for you to, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about book proposals here in, in, a, in a little bit, but um, you need to kind of find out, man, what is, what's the, what's the book you're supposed to, I know where, I, I, lost, I lost track, where was I going with that? In your proposal, there's something called a comparative landscape. Well, you're going to have to you're going to have to read three other books that are similar to the one you are writing. All right, three other books similar to the one you're writing, and you're going to have to share what sets your book apart from the others. The question is not what makes your book better, but what sets yours apart. What's what's unique? If you want to get published, you got to have a great idea. All right, you got to you got to have a great concept. All right. If, I mean, if you want to write a book about, man, 40 days of purpose, you're going to struggle because Rick Warren wrote that book, all right? So you, go, you want to find your voice. You want to find something that is unique, a story that you can share with the world. What's your concept? So um, like I mentioned, my first book, 41 Will Come, there was no doubt. I knew exactly um, that I was going to write that book. But my second one, the one that I'm working on now, it has been a challenge. I actually had five ideas, and I really, I didn't, I didn't know exactly which one I wanted to write. I prayed about it. I felt like I had the right one. I pitched those five ideas to uh, my agent's assistant, and some of the team looked through over those five, and we kind of agreed on the one that that I should should write, and that was the one that I began writing a book proposal for, and then I went out to Austin, Texas. I sat down at a meeting with my agent and her team, and within five minutes, my agent threw it out. All right, last week on our episode, I shared you have to get used to hearing the word no, right? I was shell-shocked. I mean, I w- five ideas, I grabbed onto one. That was the one I was going to do. But then after listening to her and listening to some, some wisdom, and in and, and counsel, I realized, you know what, let's put that one aside, not to say that I can't ever write that, but I got to, I, you know, I need to find the next book that I'm supposed to write, all right? And the book that I had pitched was more of a devotional book, and some of the wisdom that my agent shared with me is, unless you're, you know, Joe Olstein or George Meyer, your second book, Chuck, can't be a devotional book because devotional books don't sell as many copies as, as regular books, all right? You know, it's different if your first book's going to be a devotional book and that's how you're testing the waters and you just, you know, that, that's fine. Maybe God's calling you to write a devotional book, but, but because I wrote 41 Will Come, I've already established somewhat of a, a tribe and an audience that um, bought into my book, that was inspired by my book, so I need to write 
my second book needs to be in that same flavor, all right? It's not going to be exactly like 41 will come, but it's got to be, it's got to be inspiring. It's got to be, there's got to be stories because people are going that have already read 41 will come. They're going to want that second dose of hope. So we honed in after that. I didn't get it that day. I had to talk to my wife and pray and, and drive home from, from Austin. And, and, um, like I said, I, w- I was shell shocked. I didn't really know what, what direction I was going to go, but, um, the more I wrote down ideas, the more I prayed, the more I went through some sermon notes, the more I sought God, eventually I got that next concept in my heart. I've shared it with select people. The feedback has been good. I've shared it with, with, um, the agency that represents me. And now, man, I'm writing that proposal right now. All right. So if you want to get published, the first step today, the first key is you need to have a great concept. And one of the things that you will have to determine is who your book is for, who is your audience. And if you've already think, if you're thinking to yourself right now, well, my book's for everyone, then you're wrong. You won't get published. You need to know the demographic that you are targeting. Your publisher is going to want to know who is your book for. You cannot say everyone because not every book is for every one, all right? The Bible's for everyone, but your book's not for everyone. You need to find out who is your audience. Who are you targeting? I mean, if you're going to write a book about cooking, well, boom, that's going to help. You're going to know who your audience is. If you're writing a book about sports agenting, you know who your book's for, right? You need to know who your audience is, all right? That goes right along uh, when you're, to think about when you're coming up with your concept, know who you're writing it for. Who's the audience for? If it's a book of hope, then you know, okay, you're writing a book for people that are discouraged, those that are oppressed, those are for those who are going for, you know, going through a season of sadness, and that will let you focus on your audience. All right. So the first step to getting published is you need a great concept. All right. Our 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 second key to getting published is you need to be a great writer. All right. You're, if you're a horrible writer the chances are you're probably not going to get a publishing deal, a publishing contract. You can still self-publish, all right? But if you want to be successful, you have to hone in on your craft. And the only way that you're going to get better is to practice, all right? So I just, I just finished, um, I didn't just finish it. I'm reading a book right now by Stephen King, and it's not a horror movie, but it's actually part memoir, and, and then part how to write, all right? And the reason I'm reading it is because I want to be a better writer. And I believe we can learn from anyone, all right? And he is one of the all-time greatest writers when it comes to, to book sales. I don't care for the content that he produces, but I'm interested in knowing how has he sold 100 million books, right? We need to be better writers if we're going to be published, all right? So our first step, the first key to getting published is you got to have a great concept, all right? You got to have a great idea. Second step is this, you have to be a great writer. And there's only two ways that you can become a great writer. Number one, you need to read a lot. And number two, you need to write a lot. And I just finished um, a book called Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. And um, she has said it over and over again in the book I'm reading on writing by Stephen King. He has said it over and over again. Every writer's conference I've ever been to, they've said it over and over again. You want to be a great writer, you have to do two things. You have to read and you have to write. So if you want to get published, but you haven't read a book in the last 12 months, you're not going to get published. All right. That's how you get better. You need to read. And if you say you don't have time to read, then you don't have time to get published. You got to schedule time. You got to make time to read. And I, I suggest grabbing, grabbing a hold of audible books. You can read while you're driving. You can read while you're doing laundry, while you're sitting at a doctor's appointment. I always, I, I have a book in my, in my hearing aids via Bluetooth. When I'm driving, I'm listening to a book. When I'm waiting somewhere, I'm listening to a book. That's the way I read 40-some books, 41 books last year. I'm on book number six this year already. I know I have grown as a writer because I have made it a priority to, to read. So you have got to 
Read, cannot stress this enough. I mean, Stephen King says, you want to be a writer and you don't like to read, forget it. You're not a writer. You're not going to be a writer. You won't get published. You got to, you got to read. He reads about 70 books a year, by the way. So let me give you some, some resources that will help you be a better writer, all right? Um, you need to follow my friend Chad Allen on social media. You need to go to his website, Chad R. Allen.com, Chad R. Allen.com. Follow him on Twitter, Chad R. Allen. Go to his Facebook page. His website is filled with resources that will help you be a better writer. It will teach you how to write a book proposal. I went through his book proposal academy. He helped me write a winning book proposal that led to a publishing contract. He knows his stuff. He was an acquisitions editor at Baker Books. He worked for Baker Books for years. He is one of the most um, skilled individuals that I know when it comes to writing and getting published. So follow him, all right? Read his stuff. Get your hands on it. Go through it. Digest it, all right? Um, this will help you be a better reader. I've already um, alluded to it, but I'm going to mention it again. It's a book called Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. And um, you know why I read that one? Because my friend Chad, one of his blog posts, he listed several books to read that will help you become a better writer. And that was one of them. All right, so I read Bird, I just read Bird, Bird by Bird. There's another one called, um, I believe it's called the, the War of Art. And um, I didn't write it down, but it's all about plowing through the resistance that keeps you from writing. And I'll try to post that one. That's a great book. Um, but Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. She's a little bit cynical. She's a best-selling author. Um, she's unique. And um, there were still some great takeaways from that. And I'm going to share the, the biggest takeaway that, um, that, that I took home in reading Bird by Bird was the fact that she has index cards with her everywhere she goes. She has index cards in her purse, on her nightstand, on her kitchen counter, in her car. She has index cards everywhere. And whenever she gets an idea, an illustration, you know, blows up in her mind, she writes it down on her index cards. Whether it might, it might be a scripture verse. It might be a story. It might be something funny that happened. And she has hundreds, if not thousands, of index cards over the years. And she go, when she hits writer's block, she goes through them. And, oh, yes, this is a great story. This would be perfect for what I'm writing. And then when you go to write your book, you already have a catalog of stories and illustrations, you know, and resources that you can implement into your book. So it's a great idea. I actually um, already kind of do this, not with index cards, but I use Evernote. And when I wrote 41 Will Come, like I shared, it was 15 years in the making. I had files and files and files of illustrations and stories and scripture verses and different points that I wanted to make. And I was able to go through all those and it helped me write 41 will come and it made 41 will come better because I had some resources. So whether you want to actually write things down on an index cards or in a journal, um, I just created a new doodle note on my phone because I know my phone's with me everywhere. Um, I could put index cards everywhere, but I'll probably lose them, but I don't lose my phone. My phone goes with me everywhere. So I have a little notepad on my phone and, and I just created this I just, I just call it doodles, all right? And I started, I, I just started doing this like two weeks ago. And um, anytime I, in the last two weeks, I've had some ideas or a story. I'm sitting at a stoplight and I remember something that happened six years ago that would be great in a book. Well, I put it in that notebook right now. I, you know, I use Surrey to make a note to myself and I go back and put it in the note folder later. That way, as I write my second book, I have resources to go through. That's going to help me be a better writer. So Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. Um, and, um, I already mentioned it, but the book, it's called On Writing by Stephen King. The first half of the book is more of a memoir. It's more of his life story. And um, you got to wade through some junk to get to the good stuff. So you might want to skip and just go right to chapter four or five when he starts talking about the writing. If you don't want to hear about his story and um, you know some of his life, but uh, man, I know one thing. As I've listened to his book, I've prayed for him and his wife. He's seventy-one years old, and he's not out of the reach of God. God can grab a hold of his heart and change it. Won't that be cool? Um, that that would be, um, you know, Frank Preddy's supposed to be the 
the um, Stephen King and Christian writing and Ted Decker's up there. Um, how cool would it be if Stephen King gave his heart to Jesus? Wouldn't that be awesome? Um, I'll tell you what, I've learned a lot about writing. I'm just going to share um, a couple of things that, that, I, that I wrote down that, um, that might help you when it comes to writing. He said, use active verbs more than adverbs. Um, he says when, uh, when he's writing, he's not working because he enjoys it. He, if you want to get published, you've got to learn to love to write. You don't want to hate it. Authors love having written. But we do have to get to the point where we enjoy our work. He says, um, and don't go write in, in a coffee shop. Get yourself in a basement. Close, close the windows. Um, get it dark in there. Put on some music and block out the world. Turn off your notifications. Don't have a video game nearby. And just write. And schedule time every day. He writes Every single day, six days a week, he writes by 1.30 in the afternoon. He's already done writing his 2,000 words a day. Um, a good goal would be 1,000 words a day. That's something he shared, and that's something that I'm going to try. We should read every day. We should write every day. We do, do those two things. We will develop into a better writer. All right, the third key, because we're out of time. Our third key is... We need a great platform. Let's review, all right? We need a great idea. We need to be a great writer. And if we want to get published, we need to have a great platform. This is the challenge. This is the toughest one because um, at times it can seem like we're just self-promoting. But here's the deal. If we're going to get a publisher's attention, we have to grow our platform. We have to be able to extend our reach. There are some great resources, Jeff Goins, Michael Hyatt, Chad Allen, who I've already mentioned. And then um, I, I pulled some notes out by an author named Emily Freeman. You might want to Google her and check her out. And I loved her spin on platform. I took some notes when I saw her at Rewrite Conference back in 2013. And um, she changed the word platform to bench. So instead of asking herself, how can I build my platform? The question is, how can you build your bench? Because others will come and sit on a bench with you. Your writing can become a bench for people to have a conversation. All right? A platform is for you, but a bench is for community. So perhaps change the word in your head. This is what I'm going to do from platform to community. Begin to build a tribe Begin to take the time to reach out to people on social media. Don't post something and just look at how many likes you can get, but engage with people. Comment back. I heard another author say one time there are 4 billion people posting on Facebook every day. There are 4 billion posts on Facebook every day, and people at the end of the day, they just want to be noticed. Do you notice people that are liking your stuff? If someone comments, do you comment back? If you would just take 15 minutes a day and write people back on social media, you would build your platform. All right. You also need to find out what platform works best for you, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, maybe it's all three. I don't know. But your email list needs to grow. Your platform needs to grow. Your social media reach needs to grow if you're going to get the attention of a publisher. You can still get published with two out of the three keys I shared today. But if you have all three, you will get published. All right, that's all I got today for episode 121. I hope this, I hope this helps you on your writing journey. For more information, you can go to my website, which is Chuck E. Tate. Dot com, chuckytate.com. All right, for our producer, Mike Sable, I'm Chuck. We'll see you next week on 41 Strong. PeoriaLife.com.